like to welcome you all this morning, those who are here present in the cathedral, as well as those who are watching through live streaming. We have begun a somewhat different form of lighting our candles as we have been prevented from lighting candles here in the cathedral for our personal intentions uh, directly. We have begun to light them through, uh, I light them as you bring your intentions. So again, I remind you, you may go online. I know there's possibly still some difficulties in our form for going online with our intentions. You can always call them into the office as well as we light our candles for the particular needs of our parishioners here. Thank you for your support in this. Keep all of our intentions in your prayers. Thank you. The candles are being lit today for the repose of the souls of Helen Summers and George Balakshin. Also for the special intentions of San Juana Guardo, for the repose of the soul of Tony Falsetto, and for the special intentions of the Falsetto family, for the repose of the soul of Bernard Flores, and for the special intentions of the Flores family.
Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament and to this celebration of our Sunday Eucharist as we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Presiding at Mass this morning is the rector of our cathedral, Father Michael O'Reilly. We wish to extend a warm welcome to all those who are gathered here this morning. In a very special way, we welcome any guests or visitors who are joining us from out of town. And also, we welcome those viewers via live stream joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Today's Mass is being offered, and all Masses here at the Cathedral during the month of November will be offered for all souls of the faithful departed, and especially for those names written on the envelopes placed on the altar. At this time, I invite everyone to please turn to the front of our worship aid, where you will find our processional hymn, Sing Praise to the Lord, and let us please stand as we begin this liturgy in song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Again, welcome to all of you this morning and those who are watching through our live stream through the internet. Great opportunity today, as always, to praise God and to strive to be examples of good discipleship, uh, good people who care for and strive to be always ready for the presence of Christ in our lives. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Yeah. 
and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence, and whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care, because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Oh, Lord, my 
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for they may not be enough for us and you. Go and sit to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this well-known gospel passage, Jesus told the parable about the ten virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom, five of whom were wise and five of whom were foolish. Jesus then ends the parable saying, Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The church places this reading at this time to pre-prepare us for the season of Advent and for the great celebration of the Incarnation. We learn in this gospel that five virgins were wise because they had brought extra oil for their lamps, and the other five did not. What made these five wise and the others foolish? Was it just that the wise happened to go by the hardware store and purchase extra oil on their way? In ancient times, carrying a lamp was expected and normal, and no one would have gone anywhere without bringing extra oil to keep the lamp alight. It is somewhat like making sure you bring your cell phone charger when traveling away from home overnight, or maybe going camping and not bringing a flashlight. For the five wise virgins, bringing a flask of extra oil was the prudent thing to do. However, the foolish virgins did not bring extra oil, and therefore they needed to ask the wise virgins to share, and the wise said no. This may surprise most of us, because we are always called to share with those less fortunate. However, the oil represents something more than just a source of fuel for a lamp. The Church Fathers, St. John Chrysostom, and St. Jerome explained, 
For these wise virgins do not answer thus out of greed, but out of fear. Wherefore, each man shall receive the recompense of his own works, and the virtues of one cannot atone for the voices, vices of another in the day of judgment. In other words, the oil for the lamps represents our works of charity and generous good works that we accomplish in our lives. This is the oil of love that will keep our lamps alight and they cannot be shared with anyone else. Each person has their responsibility to follow God's will in their lives. We must be prudent, which is the quality of clear sightedness in the full light of knowledge and faith. We must not be like the foolish virgins who are not prepared for Jesus at the bridegroom's coming. We must prepare ourselves for Jesus' coming. We must have our lamps, our hearts and souls, ready for Jesus when he comes again. The church is the bride of Christ. At baptism, we, the faithful, became members of the church and thereby betrothed to Christ. We are betrothed to the bridegroom, Christ, who died for us, sanctifies us, and makes us holy. In the, ancient, in the ancient Jewish world, the betrothal is the beginning of a marriage, while everything is prepared for the wedding day and the wedding feast. While the five foolish virgins went off to buy more oil for their lamps, the five wise virgins were ready and went into the wedding feast with the bridegroom. And then the door was locked. When the five foolish virgins returned and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us, Jesus replied, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. In this instance, to know means to recognize someone through having experiences with them. The five foolish, foolish virgins were locked out. As we are the betrothed to Christ, and this is our time for preparation, will Christ recognize us? Jesus ends the parable with a warning. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Jesus is telling his disciples to be watchful and vigilant, because you do not know when the bride bridegroom will appear. We, as Jesus' disciples, must be constantly alert doing the will of God in our lives, performing works of charity in Jesus' name. This will help us to remain prepared and ready when Jesus returns. St. Augustine put it this way, watch with the heart. Watch with faith. Watch with love. Watch with charity. Watch with good works. Make ready the lamps. Make sure they do not go out. Renew them with the inner oil of an upright conscience. Then shall the bridegroom enfold you in the embrace of his love and bring you to his banquet room where your lamp can never be extinguished. As we prepare to participate in the use, this Eucharistic feast, let us remember to be always watchful and alert to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, that we may be ever prepared to keep our souls filled with the oil of love as we await our betrothed Jesus Christ to return.
And at this time, I invite forward our candidates and catechumens for their blessing. My dear catechumens and candidates, may you grow in wisdom through your reflections on the Word of God so that you will truly see what is right and good and so that you will keep your goals in mind and order your actions accordingly. Like the torch in today's gospel, may your faith be kept alive and be a source to light to others. Go now in the peace of Christ to ponder the scriptures and break open the word of God in your lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Go in peace and may God's word light your way. Go in peace and know that for you we pray. stand as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again in glory, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God has promised us that if we ask, if we seek wisdom, we will find her. Let us ask him to send his wisdom and guidance upon us and all the world. Exaudinos Domine, Exaudinos. Let us pray for God's church throughout the world, for Francis, our Pope, for Jaime, our Bishop, and for all who teach and guide the people of God. May God use the teaching and preaching ministries of our leaders to bring his wisdom into our broken world. Exaudinos Domine, Exaudinos. Let us pray for all those who govern nations and peoples. May world leaders be guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to end racism, to ensure human rights for all people, to work for peace, and to make a strong commitment to the welfare of the poor, needy, and sick. Exaudinos Domine, Exaudinos. Let us pray for ourselves. May our lives reflect the wisdom of God by the way we store our lamp oil through generous good works and reaching out in charity and mercy to those who need us. 
Exaudinos Domine. Exaudinos. Let us pray for our cathedral parish and this week for St. Basil Parish in Vallejo and Holy Trinity Parish in El Dorado Hills. May our local faith communities inspire us all to live our earthly lives with enthusiasm and joy, even as we await the fullness of life with God. Exaudinos Domine. Exaudinos. Let us pray for the sick, the suffering, the dying, the 235 who've died due to the pandemic, and all our beloved dead, whom we especially remember during the month of November. May the sick and suffering trust always in God's loving care, and may the risen Christ, at the call of the archangel, bring with him all those who have fallen asleep. Exaudinos Domine, Exaudinos. Father, may we help one another to remain alert as we await your kingdom. And may the bread of life which we share prepare us for the final coming of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here. That celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim the death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jaime, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power and the glory are yours now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Shepherd, 
so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of
Let us pray. Nourished by these sac this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, please be seated for a moment. The Church sets aside the entire month of November to remember those who have gone before us in faith. Due to the pandemic, the Book of the Dead will be virtual on our cathedral website. And as some of you, if some of you were early, you noticed that prior to the, this Mass, Father reads, or Maria reads the names of those names that are listed on our website. Envelopes, however, will be available on the back glass tables to make donations and list names of those you wish remembered. Please deposit these envelopes in any collection. The names listed on the envelopes will be prayed for at every Mass during the month and displayed on the altar on this gold tray, which some of you can barely see. Since we are unable to have our regular Festival of Trees and Lights this year due to pan pandemic restrictions, we will be selling Christmas gift baskets and other religious items in the cathedral's vestibule after Masses during this month. All these baskets are donated by other groups and people of the parish. The proceeds from the sales will be used to help fund the cathedral parish's social services program throughout the entire year. This festival funds Nora's House, the Brown Bag Lunch Program, the Front Door Ministry, and the Feed the Homeless on Tuesday nights, among other ministries. So as you're leaving today, please stop by at some of the tables and consider uh, buying some of those baskets and other religious items. As you leave today, please deposit all worship aids and copies of readings into the trash bins provided in the vestibule. We do not reuse these documents at any other masses. And if you parked in a city parking lot with the white receipt cards, you may still pick up a coupon to pay for your parking from one of the ushers. I thank you for your assistance. Thank you, Michael. Please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah.